Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm going to be continuing my conversation with Eric Scott, who played my brother, Ben. So if you are enjoying these segments, please do hit like and subscribe. Storylines, you talked a bit about being like in the POW camp and, and some of that. Um, I wanted to, when you were talking about you being younger um, as your character than in real life, um, I had not realized that it was an intentional thing about making, because Ben was originally older than Aaron, and then all of a sudden it was like Aaron was older than Ben, and and I didn't realize that that was intentional, that 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 switch up. Well, there was there was an interesting thing that went. Again, if you look at it, they did have I think Mary in the top part of the cast, even in the Homecoming, um, and I was in the bottom three, hmm. but because I was older in real life. There was a there was almost like that, and since I was really two characters, because in the in the homecoming it was Ben and Stuart that were uh, combined to make the character of Ben. So I, you know, I got all of Stuart's lines and and I got all of Ben's. So the fact that I was older, I think there was almost like we went into the series with Ben was older, um, but then they came to me and they wanted to make a specific change with Mary passing me at like around season two or three. And um, which I was fine with. In fact, I remember having a conversation with Ellen about that. And she said, I know that might not be easy for you to do, but it's the best thing to do. If you stay young, they'll have some stories to write about you. If you age yourself out, they'll have less to write about you. And I thought that was really good advice um, because if you stayed younger and that's why, you know, when I was acting, because of my short stature, I was able to do at the age of seven, eight, nine, I could do five-year-old um, characters. Uh, the only one that ever knew that I was older than that age would have been usually if I was a female casting director, because they could tell I had permanent teeth already at the age of seven, mm. but I could play the age of a five or six-year-old um, because, and I could memorize lines because I was able to read them and everything else. So it was to your advantage to, to always play younger if you could. Um, so I just said, sure, I have no problem with having Ben stay young. You can, you can make him younger than Elizabeth, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> the never aging Ben. <laughs> That's right. Just keep him, keep him there. You know, be one of the grandsons. <laughs> yeah. um, one of the questions I get asked a lot is about the sawmill. Now I never really worked in the sawmill, but people seem to be interested and also concerned in about the safety factors, like who taught you how to do that? What was going on? Was it safe? Nobody has goggles on, nobody, you know, it just, well, it and was, yet you're it clearly was, working that equipment. So how did- yes, It was, it was definitely pre-OSHA, let's, let's put it that way. Um, they gave us a cursory of, of all the equipment. Um, I had fortunately in, I think it was seventh or eighth grade had wood shot. So that was my experience going into it. Which, of course, as an actor, whenever they say, can you do something? You say, of course you can. Uh, I remember going for a role of a John Wayne movie and they said, can you ride horses? I said, of course I can. I, as you know, I don't like horses and I don't ride them, although I know you do. Um, but you never say no to anything. So when they say, hey, can you work in a sawmill? I say, of course I can. For me, it was not a difficult thing to learn. I know that if you notice, Jason hardly ever worked in it. Um, and, and Jim Bob hardly ever worked in it. Um, they, it didn't come to them as easily as it did for myself. Uh, they did do a lot of prop work beforehand to make it easier for us. So a lot of times they would take um, like a four by four piece of wood and they would, they would glue balsam wood on all four sides and then put the outside of the uh, wood, actual outside of the tree, they would put right that on it. Bark on it. The oh. bark. Thank you. Ah. And uh, that's what you would be cutting. So mm -hmm. you weren't even going into the wood. So sometimes you would even see Will at the end of the scene. He'd just pull the, the log and just pull it right on through, which you could not have done with a real mill because mm -hmm. the, the blade would have just seized right there. But, you know, just for sake of <laughs> the scene, Will wanted it done. So he pulled it through sometimes. So it was fun. And no one but, ever got hurt? Um, I don't remember anyone being hurt to the point where we couldn't continue working. Um, there might have been, you know, a little out type of thing, but yeah, 
I, just, I know nobody had any serious cuts or nobody yeah. lost any digits or anything like that. No, so. no there was n n nothing major that came out. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one that I was asked about was the, uh, the cave-in, the mill cave-in. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, the, um, the mine, when John Boy came back and they reopened the mine and, and you, you were all in, in the mine and, the, you know, and it collapsed and everything. And um, I, I, I spoke with you a bit about it, but if people didn't see that segment when I talked about that, maybe you can share um, about that. Well, it was a fun, it was a fun episode to do. Um, so we, uh, you know, the exterior, which we were not in part of most of that, that was done over there at the actual Warner Brothers mill, uh, right there in the back, uh, the side lot, which we hardly ever worked at. Yeah. And yeah. And that was very different because, um, we, we never went over there. That was a working part of the studio. So that was where they would create props and build props, but we certainly never filmed there. So that was neat. And then they actually filmed the, the set. Uh, they used an indoor stage for it and they had a whole cave um, created and we went in there. And so it was pretty much uh, fake in, in nature. Um, you know, you would you would have some styrofoam type rocks that would that would fall on you and stuff like that. There was nothing of ever any weight or anything to to, to truly be scared. It was that the, the part of an actor is to make it so that it, it is scary. So if you get a lot of questions about that it just says that we all did a good job of of creating magic for the moment they because they clearly dumped a lot of stuff on you because you could see stuff yeah kind of yeah normal. i mean they would throw it was mostly thrown in front of you in in, in front of you between so very, you and the camera so it looked like it was. exactly so you would see a lot of it coming down but it didn't hit us as much as you did they might have dusted us before the filming began so you just actually would see the after effect um, I might have wanted, they, probably some of the guys might have thrown it on me on purpose just because it's me <laughs> and they thought I was deserving of it or they had a chance to actually do something to me, take it out on me a little bit, but it was fine. Nothing, nothing uh, drastic about it. I'm sure that again, they would tell us that it was carcinogenic in nature and we shouldn't have been doing it with what we were doing, but Ignorance is bliss when you're in the Hollywood world. <laughs> uh, yes, you were always very energetic. I, I remember mornings in the makeup room and it would be, everybody would be, it would be early and we'd be half asleep and it would be super quiet. And then, and then Eric would arrive and it was like the decibel level <laughs> went up. Well, you can ask my kids uh, and I have three of them. Um, I, I'm the same way. Uh, I haven't changed. I still wake up with all the energy and the gusto of a, of a, of a 12 year old walking on a set for the first time. Um, but that really was my attitude. Uh, I was so happy to be working. You know, I've always joked that they say, what's your favorite episode? I always say one that Ben had a lot of lines in it because I was so happy to work. I loved acting. I loved doing it, being on the set, having a um, having a role to play. And, you know, we knew that we were getting quality stuff week in, week out. Um, the storylines, the scripts, uh, the, the amount of energy we would put in the show, um, you could tell everyone was serious about it. Uh, and it showed. So I was just... I was honored to be on something that like that. I mean, I had done a lot of other schlocky shows and, you know, you get on a, a set like that and it, you become very appreciative of what you had. And yeah, I, I yeah. was, so if I'm sorry, if I was too energetic for you in the morning, <laughs> I'm just not a morning I person. Probably, I probably knew that Judy and I probably did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I know you like to bait me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do remember, and you, you were a good sport about it, but I, I remember the classic things where we all had, to, you know, things with lines sometimes, but there's two that always stood out for me with you, Marsha Woolery, <laughs> that there was some, I don't know whether it was every time you had to say Marsha Woolery or just sometimes, but it's a tongue twister. <laughs> so again, you can see the correlate. Okay. So what happened was, and, and, and going for, I had a speech impediment growing up and I um, knew that. Yeah. So for my first, my first 11 years of my life, my name was Alec. Okay. So, I mean, they, when I was being cast in, in shows at the age of seven, they all thought that I was from New York and it, it was fun. They, they liked the fact that I couldn't say ours. Um, and then I got this 
Hanna Barbera was doing this cartoon thing that was going to be um, for all the schools, and it was going to be a multi uh, multi episode episodic thing. And I got the main character. Well, that's when I, this poor guy, and he was one of the, the big directors there, Art Scott. He worked with me practically every afternoon for about four months um, with my R's and all all the articulation that I had to do to really get these these little cartoons done. So it, although I was still much better by time the, the Waltons had come up in the homecoming, it was still, if you even see a, a bewitched, you'll see my R's are still not as well defined as they were by, later on. So they would give me lines like a uh, Marsha Willery and um, I, it, it, those R's just would get me or practicing basketball. The, the R's would, mm. I, I would get, stuttered and and, and t- tongue-tied so um I didn't know that was it and I, but i do know yeah, we all talk course. really fast so I well was you wouldn't like tell that. people back then you would just keep yeah. it to yourself and say so of course the writers got wind of that and they and there's a there's an evil part about some writers you know mm. and they'll put those things in so they would definitely have fun with my character uh and give me some lines that they they knew would be uh, tongue twisters for me and um they see me st- struggle a little bit, but oh, uh, that's me. Well, <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. I, I'm fine with it. I slept fine at night. It didn't uh, bother me. It was just, it was one of those things that took me a while. And I would sometimes, and sometimes it just got in the way of me acting up. So I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't studying enough or I wasn't, uh, I wasn't prepared for that, that shot at that moment. That's what I have for you for this part of my conversation with Eric Scott. I'll be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons, more Ask Judy, maybe even more with Eric Scott. Thanks for watching.